Okay, well, what an amazing uh, word from God. He's got this all arranged. That's, that's so powerful. So thank you for those words. Um, those of you who don't know me, I'm Carol Unwin. I've been coming here for about a year with my boys, Solomon and Peter, come to Covers. And I love the f- informal family feel here. I think it's wonderful. I love your passion for sharing Jesus. Um, I live in Upton at the moment. I grew up in Malvern, so I'm sort of from the area, and it's brilliant to be with you this morning. Um, John's told me about your Back in the Boat series. I don't know if we have... Oh, we've got my size. That's fine. I haven't got that nice graphic of the boat, uh, but you can remember that. So the Back in the Boat series. Boats in the Bible, a great picture, aren't they, of... Um, I'm just going to move this, I think. I'm going to crush into it. Um, boats are a brilliant picture of that safe place, isn't it? The church is a safe place amid the chaotic seas, Um, And so it's just a special picture. And as we regroup, I guess, after COVID, we're sort of getting back in the boat, back on mission. Um, It's just good to be thankful to God for that amazing place on his ship, his boat of the church. Um, If you've got children, as I said, I have, um, there is like a little worksheet, which is on topic as well, which is out there. But, um, or these things which are cool, which is all about creating a big a big picture. So John said, do a little challenge for the kids. So there is something out there if, if that's helpful for you. Okay, right. I've got my stuff set up. So as we regroup on this boat, what I want to, to think about this morning is where is the boat going? You know, is it a battleship? Is it a lifeboat? How are you picturing it? Or is it a cruise ship? Or is it like a little cabin cruiser pootling up the Avon as we get round here? And what are we building with here? Are we building with physical stones, you know? We've got the building project that we're thinking about. Uh, Or are we building with living stones? You know, like Nehemiah was rebuilding God's temple with physical stones. With us, it's living stones, isn't it? Because COVID's shaking things up, no doubt about that. And we're back to the new normal, or is it the old normal? Or anyway, it's different. We're different, maybe. And that picture of us as barrels, I don't know which one you are, you know, whether you're right down to the dregs of your faith, spirit, whatever, or whether you're sort of, you know, you're going okay, you're doing all right. Either God wants to fill us this morning, doesn't he? Fill us to overflowing. Or maybe we're a bit disorientated again after COVID. It's just weird, isn't it? We're sort of back, but it's different. It can be a bit disorientating. And we need to get up through the gears, get going again. That's right. But as we get going, where are we going? We need to cast our eyes, don't we, on where are we going? Set our reference points, set our target. So let's do that this morning. Now, um, yeah, because we don't want to drift. We don't want to drift off our course at all. So hopefully God will speak to us. I trust he will speak to us on that this morning. Now, I don't know if anyone likes Lego here. This is courtesy of my... I did ask permission. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to break it as I now look at this. Okay, I'll hold it up. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, there's a bit of a murmur of appreciation there, Solomon. So take a bow. Yeah, that, <laughs> Solomon in the blue there. But yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, with Lego, who's got any tips about Lego? What do you need to remember? I'll put it here. With Lego, don't stand on it. Yes, good one. Good one. Parent like me. Yes, we've been there late at night. <laughs> What's that? Don't lose it. Good, yeah. Back of the sofa, all down there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And oh, yes, yes. That's it. Now that's yeah. Look at that's it. Don't lose the instructions. Look at that, pristine instruction manual for how to make that beautiful thing. Because otherwise, what you're left with is this. Okay, who's got one of these in their house? Probably. Mo- yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> we. This is yeah. <laughs> this is just a small part of the bigger box that is basically Lego. Um, yeah, you're left with that. So apart from the instruction manual, yeah, you're left with that. But our instruction manual is obviously the Bible. Um, and as churches, our creator has left us this instruction manual for building his kingdom. And, of course, Jesus, who powers that like the maker of the Lego, you know, Jesus powers us as we follow his instruction manual. But we need to keep looking back at that. So just as in this instruction manual, you've got, you know, step one, 
step two, you add a bit, and you keep casting your eyes back, don't you, to this wonderful picture on the front. Because when you get a bit demotivated, it's hard, you're halfway there, it's tough. You've got to keep looking at this to inspire you to keep going and make this model. How long did that take you, Solly, by the way? Just three, three hours? Yeah, good. Okay. All right, not bad. Um, but this morning, I want us to lift our eyes then to the big picture on the front, okay? The big picture of the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. Where is it all heading? What's our grand mission? But let's, let's just pray uh, before we go any further. Jesus, we welcome you here this morning. You know, you know you've promised you're with us. Thank you already that you've been revealing your word to us. Thank you you have this whole thing arranged this morning. You, each of us here is meant to be here, meant to hear from you, meant to have our barrels topped up to overflowing. Thank you, Jesus. I pray you'd just speak to us afresh, show us again the awesomeness of the mission we are on, the wonderful, unique privilege we have to depend on you, our God and Father, to rely on your supernatural power as we push out in our mission following you. We push off from shore in the boat and build the next steps of God's kingdom here in Tewkesbury. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So as we're zooming out to look at the whole big picture of God's plan, uh, Ephesians 1 is where we're going to start. And um, you can find it in your Bible or phone if you're following. Now, it's interesting because at this time, Paul was really up against it, actually. And he had this curveball that had come into his life, a bit like we've had COVID. You know, he was shut up in just one room. He couldn't go out just four walls, um, and he was in prison uh, for him, but it was sort of the same, I guess. He was confined, couldn't catch up with friends, totally bored all the time, so just like the summer holidays, really, for my kids. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Paul writes this stuff. I guess, in a way, God meant it. He had time then to write this incredible stuff to the church in Ephesus. That was probably feeling a bit low, you know, not a great look in earthly terms to have your leader banged up in jail. Not great. So probably numbers are dip, perhaps, you know, a bit struggling, a bit confused what's going on. And Paul writes them. It's an incredible letter to just re-envision them. So we're going to read some of this this morning. And I was, as I was praying, I just thought this was what uh, God had for us. So let's turn this on. And point, here we go. It's amazing. Yeah, I love this passage. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he has lavished upon us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, some amazing truths there. Um, I just, I don't know, it's my fav one of my favorite bits, just the spine-tingling awesomeness of that. You know, the breadth, the whole universe it covers, beautiful and vast, um, and yet so personal and intimate. The reality of a personal creator God behind of all the science in our universe. It's the headlines of the whole Bible, the whole big journey that God's family go on, right from Abraham, right through to Revelation, past us. The vision statement, if you like, the business plan. And as we get back into the boat at this time, preparing for the autumn term on mission as a church. I'm picking out four of these amazing truths this morning, four from that. And they mark our identity before anything else. 
forget all identity poli politics. This stuff here is our, our identity. Our hero, Jesus, has won them for us. And it's like, I don't know, you can imagine it like they're stamped on our boat ticket, if you like. So fasten your seatbelts. I'm going to whistle through this. Firstly, verse 4, he chose us in him before the beginning of time. He chose you, okay? Now, um, has anyone seen James Webb telescope stuff? You know, there's been pictures in the news, hasn't there? Incredible pictures. They've sent up this telescope. Sort of picked out a couple here, I think. This one of them, I think, sort of part of the edge of a galaxy. Uh, and another one here. Now, this one is quite cool. So each of those little blobs, isn't it, is a whole galaxy. So like our Milky Way, each of those blobs is a whole other galaxy. There's like about 30 billion of them or something that they've spotted so far. And what they're trying to do, it's the mystery, isn't it? They're trying to look past them because each one of these, the light takes, you know, whatever crazy million amount of time. So if they can look past, then they can see the star. What's beyond, you know, that's what, anyway. But it's incredible to think that, well, okay, I get the new scientists anyway, who are, this is their latest one. Your brief guide to everything ever, all right? Okay, so that's got some stuff on it. But that's wrong, isn't it? That's a bit presumptuous. Because, of course, this is our guide to everything ever. Anyway, they don't realize that yet. Um, so, of course, if you were to look beyond and through those galaxies, right back to the beginning, before the creation of the world, you would see our faces. <laughs> it's a bit crazy, isn't it? Red dwarf. But these verses in Ephesians, God chose you. He chose you. He chose his church before the beginning of time, before the creation of the world. Okay? Amazing. We can't really get our heads around it. Um, Again, in physics, predestination now is a thing, apparently, with quantum stuff, and I don't understand. But, you know, even, yeah, it adds up. Of course it adds up, because it's true. Amazing. Some of us, we're not used to being chosen. You know, maybe at school or whatever, you remember standing against a wall. <laughs> you, weren't, you were never the first to be chosen. You were never the hardest hitter or whatever. And some of us have that. We carry that. Okay, and that's affected our self-esteem, our self-confidence. You know, get rid of that. You are chosen. This says God has chosen you. Okay, it's wonderful, isn't it? Before you knew you existed, he chose you. God didn't wait to find out how much effort you put in, how good you were, how hard you could hit a ball. No, he chose you before all that. You're chosen, you're in. And how does that make you feel? It's, it's just special. <laughs> really great. So many people, though, in our world spend so much time on social media profiles or whatever trying to get people to like them, yeah? It's ridiculous. You know, you've got to get people to like you to give you the little likes. And yet God has already chosen them. Don't need to do that. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, yeah. There we go. He chose you to be holy and blameless. I don't know. I saw this program, Rich Kids Go Skin. I don't know if anyone else watched that, but yeah, it was quite cool, wasn't it? So they had a rich kid go into a poor kid's family and they swapped places. And this one kid is from Worcester, actually, but um, he went to this poor family um, and he was sort of going to the shops with them or something. And yet, every, literally every 30 seconds, he was having to take a selfie. And he was getting this other kid. He was like, oh, come on, can you just take a selfie of me? Um, you know, outside Iceland or whatever. And, um, but yeah, just because he wanted to be liked, I guess, he had to keep that profile up. We don't need to do that. Now, next one, okay, verse five. Yeah, he predestined us to be adopted as sons according to his pleasure and will. So we all know if we're Christians, if I don't know, you might not all be Christians yet, but he has, he wants to adopt us as his children. And the great exchange, Jesus did that on the cross. He took our punishment so we can be adopted as children. Um, and just because, I mean, he loves it. It's fun. Okay, according to his pleasure and will. I love that, that that's in there, the Bible. Um, and I don't know what your earthly family is like. I don't know whether they would choose to adopt you if 
They knew what you were allowed. <laughs> they were a weird concept. But God has chosen to adopt you, adopt you. And he loved to do it. Now, Solly here, um, it's quite a funny story, but Solly, do you remember you helped me demolish that kitchen in the flat in Malvern, okay? Um, we were doing up this flat, and there's this horrible, greasy kitchen about 40, 50 years old, like chipboard. And Anyway, we were, like, smashing it up, and... Um, I had to find out what time the tip closed because obviously we're filling our massive Renault traffic van with this kitchen and it closed at four o'clock so I was like timing it all okay come on get in the sledgehammer keep going we've got to make the tip get in the car we're done by about half three drive to the tip 345 get there and oh no heart sinks there's this man in a high-vis jacket at the entrance to the tip and you're like oh dear ah oh, what's happening and he's like Wind the window down. Ooh, arms folded. Ooh, you're leaving a bit late, aren't you, love? And I was like, what? I was like, what? It's 3.45. It closed at 4. Uh, oh, no, i got to be off the site at 4, love. No. <laughs> so I'm like, what? I've got, like, this literally whole van of rotten kitchen. <laughs> I have got to get rid of this before my husband sees the van <laughs> full of this stuff. Um, but, yeah, I sort of smiled a lot and kept persuading him. Finally, he let me in. He didn't want it. It was like reluctant. I had to work hard. I had to persuade him. And I said, look, we'll unload it really quick, honestly. You can still get home. You'll still be off the site by four. Um, it said his missus was making the tea. And you know, True story. But yeah, finally, let me in. But God is not like Malvern Tip. I mean, I hope Tewksbury's better. Is Tewksbury better? No. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> More than the job's worth, isn't it? Yeah, anyway. So <laughs> remember that. But God is not like that with us, and yet we can imagine it sometimes, you know. We've got to sort of force our way in or something. No, he, according to his pleasure, he loves to welcome us into his family. Romans 5, 8. While we still had our hearts hardened against God, he had already sent his son Jesus to die instead of you to take your punishment. That's how much he loves you. So uh, maybe this week, you know, this week, as God welcomes us, maybe we can just remind ourselves about welcoming other people, you know, text someone, invite them around for a meal. Um, We can welcome them as God has welcomed us. So maybe go again on that, inviting people, being welcoming. And as a church, perhaps, you know, as we get ready to power on in our mission, how are we welcoming new people? Would it be okay? Or would they come in and think, oh, it's a bit like a club, I don't belong here? You know, let's think, or are we going to go out of our way to think, well, what would new people like? What would be comfortable for them? How would they like it? Whatever can we do so that they'll meet God, they'll encounter God, and the only offensive thing or upsetting thing, the only thing would be, Jesus, the gospel of Jesus. That would be the only thing that would put them off because it, it does put some people off. It's meant to, it's a message. But everything else, let's welcome. Right, the third truth, see who spotted this one. He has redeemed you, of course. Verse 7, in him we have redemption through the costly and precious blood of Jesus, God's son. Um, and this comes in two parts, if you like, so cool. Our sins are gone. You know those bad things that we don't want others to know that we do, but we do, and we feel we can't get out of them, and we feel we're trapped in those habits. You don't need to be trapped, okay? The devil lies to us, tells us we can't change, tells us we're stuck in those ways, but no, that's a lie. Jesus' power can break all habits, can break the hold that bad things have on us, whether it was bad things done to us, or bad things we've done ourselves. So we can break free. They're gone, they're washed away. We can live past them. We need to do that. And they're really deleted. It's not like other stuff where journalists are going to rake it up in 20 years' time. (laughs) Nothing is ever deleted. That terrible hell of a world. Um, You know, if we've invited Jesus into our life, he keeps no record of wrong so special so just you know imagine them even now maybe imagine them just floating away down that river they're just gone you can start afresh don't hold on to them don't let the devil deceive us let's put on Jesus white robes of righteousness and and even better God can repurpose in fact 
even all the bad stuff. You know, you get that with Joseph in the Old Testament. What God meant, what what his brothers meant for bad, God can turn to good. And we have that with our lives as well. So even our lives before Christ that weren't honoring to God, God wants to use that stuff. Nothing is wasted. That's what redeem means. Now, I don't know if anyone knows this guy. (laughs) Yeah. Any, any Alice Cooper fans? Um, yeah, back in the day. So Heavy Rock. Okay, so he's become a Christian uh, uh, not so long back, I think, or a few years ago he's become a Christian, which is amazing. Yeah, very special. And these are his words here, um, wonderful words. He says, I don't think we accept Christ. I think we accept the fact that he accepted us. Uh, You can't put that into words, he added. It's because God opens your eyes and it's supernatural. When the Lord opens your eyes, you suddenly realize who you are and who he is, and it's a whole different world. Uh, But he, you know, when he became a Christian, he felt like he's got to give up that life of heavy metal rock and drugs and uh, all the other bad stuff that went with that that he did. He felt, I've got to give all that up. So he says, I went to my pastor and I said, I think I've got to quit being Alice Cooper now. Um, And my pastor said, really? Uh, Do you think God makes mistakes? Look where he put you. He put you in the exact camp of the Philistines and you were basically the leader. Now, what if you're Alice Cooper, but what if you're now following Christ as Alice Cooper, you know? And you're a rock star, but you don't live the rock star life. Your lifestyle is now your testimony. Isn't that wonderful? I I love that. And there's something in that that might be for you, you know. Maybe there's stuff um, that you thought you've got to give up or skills you're not using or parts of yourself you're not handing over or putting to work in the church. But God can repurpose everything, even bad stuff. So, yeah. What are you good at? And the other thing you can do, which is even, even better, and we can do as a church, is basically look at it the other way around. God promises, yeah, that he'll give us everything we need to do his mission in Tewkesbury as we reach out, we push out to win more disciples, to extend his kingdom here in Tewkesbury. He promises he'll give us all we need. So everything we need to build his kingdom and see it grow in faith and grow new disciples, new Christians, is already here, okay, which is wonderful. <laughs> it's already in us all, or stuff he'll provide. We have enough money. We have enough everything because he's provided it, hasn't he? It's just by definition. It's just how he is, okay? It's very cool, very exciting. So if we line everything up just in the right direction, um, and we have Jesus in the center, then that's it. His kingdom grows. It's all healthy just happens right the final truth okay saving the best or last um yeah he reveals the plan okay he reveals the plan he draws back the curtain behind life the universe and everything the answer is not 42 but it's here it's in the instruction manual he's revealed it to christians to paul um to us There is a plan, that's the first thing. I mean, watching the news, you know, (laughs) you would think there's not a plan. You would think things are going downhill, it's quite depressing. You'd think things are chaotic, Um, but it's not. There's a king, God is in control. Uh, Chaos doesn't reign, God reigns, or Jesus reigns. The big reveal... What are we building? The big reveal, isn't it, is um, in our passage is that God is bringing unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Everything is going to be brought under Jesus Christ, the head. And he is victorious now, reigning in heaven and reigning in our hearts of Christians on earth. But ultimately, everything will be brought under him as head that's the big plan so that's what we can line ourselves up with in our lives individually as we bring more and more parts of our life under jesus as head and as we in this church as we bring more and more aspects of the church under jesus as head we are getting ourselves in line with his mission 
We are on the right course. Uh, and it's all about Jesus. So that's basically it. It's all about Jesus. So that's how I summarize it. It's all about Jesus. God's will is to bring everything under the headship of Jesus. And he will do that. And he is doing that. Um, I put another way, Jesus is the hero. And we can check. I find it's a handy check. Is Jesus the hero? So, you know, this church is amazing. It has loads of different groups and stuff going on. Um, it's sort of known about in the community. It's really special in that way. And um, let's make sure that Jesus is the hero of every part, every group. Jesus is the hero. He is the main focus. That it's obvious that if an alien came uh, from outer space, <laughs> um, that they would figure out a spot that, oh, okay, all right, they, I don't know, they play football, they do this, or they have bacon sandwiches, they have a chilled time, but, oh, there's this person, Jesus, they keep going on about, or, oh, it seems to be all about him, or, yeah, he's the most important thing. So I find in churches that can be quite helpful. It's like a little audit, you know, but just because um, it's hard. Our world wants to squeeze Jesus out of things, and if you spot, you look, see it all around you. Uh, it's like, you know, the BBC, Commonwealth Games, or after someone wins something and they're trying to pray, they're trying to kneel, they're trying to thank God, BBC quickly pans off that, doesn't it? You notice? Or if it's a food bank, you know, they'll show the volunteers in a church, don't they, in the food bank, but oh no, they won't say why they're doing it. They won't let them say, well, we wanted to serve. Jesus served poor people. We want to serve. They won't let them say that. So, all the time, Jesus is trying to be squeezed out. And we've got to remember, it's always the good. The devil, devil's very cunning. It's always the good that gets in the way of the best, right? The devil doesn't go head on to try and tempt us with bad stuff of, oh, all come over here and steal cars or something. You know, it's not, it's not going to work, okay? What he does is he gets us so busy with the good things and the good projects that we don't have as much energy for the God things. So the good things, they're not quite the God things, maybe. So we've got to watch that. And, and I think as well, it's just as we finish, it's just useful to think, you know, let's be doing the stuff that only a church can do, okay? Because if we're not doing that, then, then literally no one else is going to accidentally do that. So let's be doing stuff that only churches can do. We need to at least do that, Yeah. I mean, we can do lots, lots else. What did Jesus tell us before he went back to heaven? What was his command, his mission, Matthew 28? All kindness in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and spread kindness to all nations, helping them in the name of safety, sharing, and inclusiveness, and teaching them to consider my life as an example they might want to learn from, and surely you might feel empowered to have a good feeling. No. Okay, I'm being provocative there, but just to make a point. <laughs> because that is the mold the world, world wants to shove us into, okay? Just keep squeezing us, squeeze Jesus out. Just get us busy doing nice stuff. Now, it's lovely all that, it's lovely, but it's not quite right. And it's always going to be hard. It's always going to be hard to stay on that true narrow path. It's always going to be hard. There's always a wide, easy path, okay? Matthew 28, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And um, I'm sort of preach, preaching always at myself as well, and it's hard. And I know all the times when... I just get busy. It's so easy to get busy doing stuff, refreshments and set up publicity. And uh, I don't do the tech necessarily or building stuff, but all of us can just, it's easy, isn't it? We get so busy with this stuff that's easy to see and in front of our eyes that it can keep us away from the harder things. Um, the church in London, where I was helping lead, I ran this toddler group and uh, I always disappointed with myself. I mean, we did great work. They had 60 kids and then the adults. Okay, I mean, it was massive. Um, I was disappointed with myself, with how we seem to be so busy and so active. But how was it actually advancing God's kingdom? You know what I mean? It, yeah, it was a lovely place. Supporting parents. We got funding from the council. Lovely. All lovely, cute stuff. Um, how was it doing what Jesus did? 
And as a small attempt, and I don't think this necessarily is the answer, but as a small attempt, I tried to just have a little thing. I tried to mention Jesus at least three times every session, you know. <laughs> so try and take opportunities to pray with one of the mums or... Uh, I put Bible verses where they pay, so at least they had to read a Bible verse as they came in, and that might spark something. Or, um, Yeah, just little things. Uh, on our craft, instead of having God loves you on stuff, which they used to do, I put Jesus loves you. Because again, of course, in London, you say God loves Well, which gods, you know? I mean, in our cult, yeah, which God, actually? You know, that's not, nobody minds that. I mean, God, yeah, whatever. Um, so Jesus, though, very much more specific and challenging and then might hopefully provoke conversation to explain that. Um, yeah. But I think then, to finish then, yeah, so as we get back on the boat, um, I hope just that's helped just to lift your vision to this incredible mission we're on. Um, we're building God's kingdom, aren't we? There's no greater privilege. Um, we've got all we need. Uh, we've got Jesus as our cornerstone. Let's make sure we've got building with living stones, people of faith. Um, let's step out in faith more, perhaps, in Jesus' name. And it might be different things for each one of us that God's been challenging us about. Maybe our barrel's really empty. Maybe it's quite full. I don't know. I don't know how God's been challenging you. Um, but yeah, let's make sure that we're not getting blown off course. We're not getting pushed into the mold that the world wants to push us into. Um, that we are out there doing what Jesus did, healing, uh, trusting him for his power, sharing his good news, seeing people repent, baptizing them. He's God. That'd be great. Let's Let's, let's be out there doing what we need his power for, yeah? Not what we can do in our own strength. strength. Anyone can do that. No, our distinctive, our USP is to be doing stuff that we can only do with his power, yeah? So I'm going um, to pray now. Maybe if the musician want to come up and uh, can always play a little bit as well as we, before we have our final song. Um, but let's just have a time of quiet. Uh, you can do business with God. Jesus, I thank you for your faithful followers here. Thank you for this church, this outpost of your kingdom here. Thank you for how you've provided, you've sustained. And wherever each of us is at, whether our barrels are down to the dregs or half full, just provide now what we need. Just pour into our lives. By your spirit, just fill us anew. Heal things, heal, heal, pattern, heal bad habits we've got into it over COVID. Um, in the name of Jesus, we, we cast out all evil, um, all evil chains that are binding people. Um, we just break them in the name of Jesus. I just ask that you would help each of us make a new start, whatever that means for each of us, that we would be able to rely on your power, we would be able to step out in faith, and we would have the wonderful fulfillment and deep joy of seeing your purposes come to pass in this place, in this town, with our friends, with our neighbors. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen.